Today we continue our NHL season preview series and we're taking a look at the Boston Bruins. They had a team that saw significant turnover this past offseason. Are they still cup contenders or is the window closed? We'll discuss what to expect coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned today, we're taking a look at the Boston Bruins and previewing their upcoming 2021-22 NHL season. As I mentioned, they saw some pretty significant turnover, at least in my opinion. Uh, and obviously this team's going to look a fair bit different going into the upcoming year. And obviously they haven't had the playoff success that they've been looking for most recently. So can they still get the job done? Can they still contend? Will they still be near the top of their division? Let's discuss. But before we do that, I do want to take a look back at last year just to recap how things went. Take a look at the team results quickly and who are some of their top performers were now the Bruins of course last year competed and in a, an adjusted 56 game campaign uh, competed in an eastern division with some different teams and they're used to playing all the time of course it was a very unique season for all NHL teams they finished in a third place with a record of 33 16 and 7 with a 73 point total uh, they were pretty good on goals for about the middle of the league 168 goals they allowed 136 for fourth best so again the Bruins have been a strong defensive team for quite some time, and that continued. Uh, special teams were both really solid. The PK, again, goes along with their strong defensive play, 85.9% success rate, and the power play uh, had a 21.8% success rate. So special teams were good. Defense was good. Goals were, you know, not bad, but certainly could have been a little bit better to get them to be a, a higher-ranking team. But overall, the Bruins had a pretty... A uh, pretty successful year. They unfortunately lost in the second round of the playoffs to the New York Islanders. Uh, the Islanders have kind of been a playoff nemesis of them as of late. Uh, so will they run into them again? Will it be different? Of course, this year we go back to the old division. So the Atlantic division that they're used to playing in, the teams like the Leafs and the Florida Panthers, Tampa Bay Lightning, the back-to-back -back champions, Montreal Canadiens, of course, in there, the Stanley Cup finalists. And, of course, you got Buffalo, Detroit, and Ottawa in the mix in there as well. Uh, and, of course, we're going to see teams play against more than just their divisions this year. So it's going to be uh, kind of what's old is new again. And it's going to be a different look in the NHL after having, uh, you know, a year and a half, basically, of uh, some different NHL hockey. So uh, we're going to take a look at the Boston Bruins and their ad exits, their additions, and take a look at how this team has changed. Now, first up, with the Bruins exits, they lost a significant piece in free agent center iceman David Krejci, a longtime Boston Bruins uh, player who was expected to stay. Many thought he would resign, but he opted to go back and play at home in his native country, the Czech Republic, citing family reasons. And really, you can't fault him for that. Uh, but at the same time, it does leave a big hole right in the middle of the Bruins lineup. He's been the ultimate number two center for some time. Uh, had great chemistry with the newly acquired Taylor Hall going into uh, the, the end of last year into the playoffs. Hall re-signed, so everybody was kind of thinking that would be a good one-two punch for their second line this year. Krejci not in the mix, so that does create an issue there. Uh, they also lost goaltender Yero Halak, who departs the organization, which thought was mutual. Uh, they saw a situation with the young goalies coming up and everything that they were obviously made some major changes between the pipes. So Halak's no longer with the Bruins. Uh, they also lost a couple of forwards in Andre Kasha and Nick Ritchie, both of which were not qualified as restricted free agents, became UFAs and signed elsewhere. Both went to the Toronto organization. Uh, of course, we also saw Sean Corrali depart as well as a free agent. He goes to the Columbus Blue Jackets. And then we also saw longtime defenseman Kevin Miller uh, announced the end of his career. He retires, and Jeremy Lozon ends up being the selection in the Seattle expansion draft. So they lose uh, a bit all around. And, of course, there's still a big question mark is on Tuka Rask. We don't know that he's really gone, but we can't say that he's there either. So I've added him to this list with a question mark because we don't know what his future holds. We know that Rask kind of have a significant offseason surgery. At this point, he remains unsigned. I, I have no doubt that what he's saying uh, and said before is, is true, that he will not play for another NHL team. It's either Bruins or nobody. And I do believe there's a really good chance that the Bruins do sign him, but it looks as though they're probably waiting for the recovery to take place, and maybe they sign him later in the year. I'm not sure how that's going to go. Maybe Rask wants to wait and make sure that he's going to be able to play at a high enough level to continue playing first. I'm not really sure where things sit with Duca. Uh, he hasn't really said a whole lot publicly, just that it's either Bruins or Boston. He's hoping to get back and play a little bit longer. But as we'll take a look at here in the addition side of things, the goaltending situation in Boston 
is very, very different, and the Bruins are certainly well prepared to be able to move on from Rasko as their longtime goaltender, uh, you know, and one of the strong goalies around the NHL. Um, so it's certainly a bit of a changing of the guard going in that direction. Now, before we jump and take a look at the additions section of this team, I do need to pause for a moment and acknowledge one of our channel sponsors, Exter Smart Wallets. Top Shelf Hockey is proud to be sponsored by Exter. Forbes calls Exter the most successful smart wallet brand in the world. They certainly have high quality products, high grade leather. You can put all your cards in your wallet with RFID protection and you can track it worldwide. That's the best part. You don't have to worry about losing your wallet and not being able to track it down. They have a great selection of products to choose from here, a variety of colors and styles, something to surely help for everyone. As you can see in the demonstration here for the product I have, this is a beautiful packaging, high quality. When you open it up, you get a high quality wallet with lots of slots for your cards. You have yourself a money clip if you want to carry cash on you here as well. Uh, and certainly, as you can see, the quality is outstanding. And here you can see the switch where you can help open up your cards. You just one little click and boom, everything fans out right in front of you. Easy to access. Your cards are protected. And here's the back where you have yet another slot. A terrific overall product. And I can't recommend these enough. Extra ships worldwide. And you can check out the link down below in the description as well as the pinned comment to buy yours today. So thanks very much for watching that promotional content. I do greatly appreciate it. Also want to take a moment and shout out all of our channel members uh, who support this channel with a monthly contribution. They do go a long way in helping this channel be successful and grow. So you know who you are. Your names are all listed in the description of every video. And I do want to thank you very much for your support as well as all the merchandise sales lately as well. Certainly helped tremendously uh, as well. Of course, you'll see the merchandise down below here, right below the video, all kinds of great hoodies and t-shirts uh, for your consideration. Now, looking at the additions here for the Boston Bruins, they've certainly made some interesting moves to uh, replace the players that we just talked about that are departed from the organization and no longer with the Bruins, obviously. Signing goaltender Linus Allmark from the Buffalo Sabres uh, on a long-term, fairly expensive contract was certainly a move that I don't think too many of us saw happening in Boston. Clearly with uh, Halak departing, which we already knew was going to happen uh, because we heard before free agency started that the Bruins and Halak were not going to be re-signing and they were going to be parting ways. We knew Rask was injured and as well as being a free agent uh, and might not you know, play or might not sign. We didn't really know what was going on with Rask. So we got Swayman and Vladar, and then they end up trading Vladar and signing Allmark from Buffalo and giving him a long-term deal. So they certainly hope that works out because that's a lot of money and a lot of term. Jeremy Swayman certainly looked real solid last year in his uh, limited role, but uh, you know certainly showed a lot of promise to be able to continue to be a strong piece for the Boston Bruins too. So we'll have to see how that all works out. Of course, they also uh, signed Nick Foligno of the Maple Leafs. So it'll be interesting to see a dynamic here. We know the Leafs and Bruins um, rivalry goes back a long ways after several playoff series in recent years. Uh, and we've seen some players change teams between the two. So that's going to make things interesting, especially if there was a playoff series again, uh, you know, with uh, Richie and Kasha going to Toronto and Foligno coming uh, to Boston. It just kind of adds a little bit of another dynamic, I think, to that uh, once we see them take the ice against each other. So Felino comes over, uh, likely going to play that middle six role. Uh, hard to say exactly where he slots, but probably plays on your third line in Boston. Uh, we also have uh, Derek Forbert coming in as a uh, defenseman to play on that left side. He gives you some size and some strength uh, and obviously uh, some, you know, more of a defensive defenseman, but not the strongest defensively, but like I said, I mean, in the right positions with the right starts, I think he can be effective there. Uh, but certainly, you know, not quite the guy like what they used to have there back there, like with Zidane Chera. Uh, obviously, you know, a whole different dynamic there. But forward will uh, be a, a short-term uh, fill-in. And, of course, they also brought in a couple of forwards who both played together with the Vegas Golden Knights, too. And that's Eric Halla and Thomas Nosek. I mean, Halla can likely be your number three center. You know, maybe move up to that second line if need be. And then, of course, you also have Noshek, who can be a really solid bottom six guy, kill penalties. I think the Bruins uh, fans will really like Noshek. Uh, he's the kind of guy that you don't always notice a lot, not overly flashy, but does a lot of the little things well. And just can be that, you know, solid bottom six guy that you can be comfortable putting out there in a variety of situations. So those are all of your additions 
for Boston. Now we're going to jump over to dailyfaceoff.com and take a look at their line projections. I'll give you my thoughts on what they're projecting, uh, and we'll take a look at what their lineup could look like here heading into the new season. Of course, your top line, no big surprise, will continue to be the perfection line of Bergeron, Martian and Pasternak, that's not going to change. Of course, unless Coach Bruce Cassidy decides to they shake things up, but really, at some point, you know they're going to play together. They're certainly the, the highest-rated player in their position. Uh, it looks as though Charlie Coyle will get every opportunity in the beginning of the year to solidify that number two center spot. Uh, obviously, he's likely going to play with guys like Taylor Hall and Craig Smith on that line. Uh, your number three line will likely be a couple of newcomers mixed in with Jake DeBrus. So probably Felino on the wing with Howla and DeBrusque. I, I don't know how that's going to go. Uh, quite a, a different dynamic there. I mean, realistically, we know Jake DeBrusque can play a physical game. We know Nick Felino can as well. Felino might be actually a good influence on DeBrusque. And uh, when it comes to that work ethic and, uh, you know, just kind of creating the, the, the right things to be uh, a more consistent player. I mean, Nick Felino has been a pretty consistent guy, even though his numbers have been up and down a little bit. You never doubt the effort, and he always finds a way to contribute, whereas DeBrusque has had uh, struggles with that and has been surrounded by trade rumors for uh, the better part of a year, almost two, really. So like, will DeBrusque you know, still be a Bruin throughout the whole year? It's debatable, but I think if anybody might be able to be a good influence on him, playing on the same line, at least it would be Felino. Clearly, there's plenty of other influences within the team uh, to lead the way there, like Bergeron and... Uh, you know, Pasternak, Marshawn, etc. Like they have great leadership in that group, and really, it's surprising to me why DeBrusque has struggled. But we'll have to see what they uh, end up doing with him. And your fourth line they have is Noshak, uh, Frederick, and Wagner. But I, I certainly have some concerns that that might not be your fourth line. I think guys like Curtis Lazar and Jackson Nika are going to have something to say about that. I can see them finding ways to get into this lineup. I'm not sure that Wagner is going to play every day. Not completely sure that Frederick's going to play every day. Um, and obviously, we'll have to see what the future holds for DeBrusque. I mean, personally, if I'm Boston, I, I would probably try to upgrade that number two center spot. And Jake DeBrusque would be my trade chip and maybe a, a prospect in there to try to make that happen if I can. I just don't have a lot of confidence in Coyle as that number two center. I think he's better suited for a third line role. And it might be a little tough to get the offense to drive you need out of that. And if his play could directly impact a guy like Hall, his numbers could be down. I just, I just don't know what to think of that, to be completely honest. Uh, your, your blue line is uh, pretty straightforward here. You're going to have Grizzlick and McAvoy likely be your top pair with uh, Carlo and Forward playing on your second pair. And Mike Riley and Connor Clifton being your third pair. Now, of course, between the pipes, you got Lena Solmark and Jeremy Swayman with the possibility of Rask joining later in the year. Of course, Jeremy Swayman is waivers exempt, so he can go down to the minors and make room for Rask if they get that signing done and he's able to play and contribute later on into the season. So now, what are my predictions? Where do I see this team going? Uh, it's certainly going to be a tough and interesting year for Boston. I do think that they're still going to be a very competitive team. I do see them likely being in the playoffs. I do see them likely, uh, you know, competing in a spot where they're probably going to be in a number three, number four spot, to be completely honest, in the Atlantic division. I'm not sure they're going to be competing near the top. I mean, maybe they will. A lot's going to depend on some questions that I just don't know the answers to right now, including their goaltending like Allmark and Swayman. That has potential to be really, really good, but it also has potential to take a little longer to kind of solidify itself. So I'm not really sure what we're going to get there. I have a lot of confidence in Swayman. Allmark did well on a bad team in Buffalo. So realistically, it should be pretty good. And if a goaltending holds up, then the rest of it will kind of take care of itself, in my opinion. But I do have concerns over Coyle in the number two center spot. Will they produce enough? That second line, as much as there is talent there, will they be able to give you enough secondary scoring to help you win enough hockey games? And of course, the blue line to me is pretty good. But they could use another more experienced puck mover back there. Uh, we'll see how things go. I did like the addition of Mike Riley late in the year. So a full season with him will be interesting. We'll see if Grizzly can take some steps forward. Of course, McAvoy and Carlo are pretty solid back there. I don't have too many concerns over the blue line, the goaltending. Uh, you know, it's just a, that secondary scoring to me that concerns me the most. But we might see a scenario where a guy like Jack Stagnica might take some steps forward here and, and really solidify that second line too. I can see by the end of the year, if they don't make a trade and they give him more of a chance, that he could be that guy. So we'll have to see how things go, to be completely honest. They're going to be in tough though with teams like the Florida Panthers, 
Tampa Bay Lightning, Toronto Maple Leafs all being really strong. You know, Montreal is going to be right in the mix there too. So, you know, they could be really anywhere from first down to fourth or fifth, to be completely honest. It's really, really tough to predict how those teams are going to finish. But right now, I honestly think they're going to be battling between that number three, number four spot. And I think they will make the playoffs. I can see as many as possibly five teams in the Atlantic Division making the playoffs and maybe only three from the Metro. It will certainly bode well for them getting in. And once you're in, as we know, anything can happen. And I can see also see a scenario unfolding that they could end up making a trade or two throughout the year to solidify and uh, kind of look after some of these weaknesses that I've addressed as potential concerns if they indeed end up being that. But just this, to me, this is a little bit harder than usual to peg exactly where they're going to be given the changes that we've seen during this current offseason. So those are my predictions and my preview here for the Boston Bruins. Of course, as always, I want to know what your thoughts are on this team down below in the comments. Let me know what you expect from them this year. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.